Here we go, guys. You all know how silly I am. I'm with one of the most famous uh, Chinese or Oriental chefs in the country and I'm going to attempt to cook him some uh, chow mein but I've got a secret weapon I've got can I borrow that knife there please yeah, Mr. Pang? Uh, yeah. I've got a secret weapon come and have a look at these Attila these are our Scarlatina Belites amazing we've been picking quite a few of them and watch this guys cut them in half and can I see? Can I see? There you go. Beautiful. Can I see it again? Can I see it again? Like blue staining. Can I see it again? They change straight away, don't they? I've got to say to you guys, there are some poisonous mushrooms in the UK that look very much like this that stain blue. So don't go picking your scarlatina beliefs unless you really know what you're doing. But when you do know what you're doing and you're confident enough to pick these mushrooms, they are really one of the tastiest mushrooms that we have in the UK. So this and some chickweed, these are my secret weapons. I don't think you've ever tasted these mushrooms I've before. I've never tasted them. You, you, said, what, you said they taste a bit like porcinis, eh? They are very like porcinis, only they're firmer. So you get even more of a sort of, uh, you know, firm bit of mushroom in your, in your stir fry. They look amazing. Yeah, you're right. We have fire, fantastic. That was hard. And we have our Scarlatina Belites, we've got some noodles, we've got uh, a famous chef and uh, <laughs> we're going to attempt to cook some lovely chow mein by the banks of the River Wye. I like this. I said I was going to cook, but somebody's just quietly taking over as the uh, <laughs> cooking is going on. I wonder. I can't why. help it. I can't help do you, it. Do you run something called the School of What? Yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Is that possibly what it is? Yeah, I read a few books about that. Yeah, um, but absolutely. I mean, if there's a stove, especially outdoors, I can't help myself. And mushrooms like this. Look at that. How do you how do you cut them? Just just nice slice. Just slice them. Yeah. All right. I def I, I'm definitely missing my cleaver right now. I don't like mushrooms. You don't like mushrooms? Uh, you like noodles though, don't you? Oh, what do you mean? Well, don't worry, you can eat all the noodles. Yeah, you know what You're it's like, Jeremy. You're little one. <laughs> yes, <Hello>. yes. You'll <laughs> like mushrooms one day, Bonnie, don't oh, worry. Yeah, but it is, mushrooms sure. are a funny thing for kids, aren't they? It's a hard one for kids to like, I think. I think kids just rebel. And that's what it is. <laughs> for free. Come, come and have a look at these beautiful blue mushrooms wow, that we're using look at here. That. Right, I've done half the chopping. What, so what well, else do you want to eat? I think you may as well just keep going there. Oh, you I was going right, to... This gonna... needs to get hot enough first, so that's not quite... You need a school of what, what Marlo? Do, oh, do you sell woks? Mm. Yeah, well? they're much thinner, better than this. That's the sound we want. Never lose your sizzle. That is important. I haven't yet, Jeremy. <laughs> That's why I've come back to see you. <laughs> There's a glass for you. Thank you. That's very kind. I like your rustic approach, Milo. It's the best way, isn't it? Yeah, like I say, you go with the flow. See where it takes you. I like that you've gone for noodles as a it's nice and simple yeah we've got proper proper sizzle now haven't we let's get some of these red crack beliefs in as well we may as well we don't take the easy about cooking. mushrooms is you don't like a lot of them you don't really have to chop up at all I've got some asparagus here. Would you ever put that in? A hundred percent, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, we'll add a bit of crunch to the asparagus then. Is that for me, is that? That fizz. That's for me, is it? Nice. There you go. You can be a, a bit Keith Floyd on us. Oh, my favourite chef. <laughs> really? Honestly, you mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, to be honest, mine too. But really? There you go. Well, it's not random, mate. D, D and I used to go to... We did a bit of travel journalism in uh, Asia, in Thailand. 
that's for Keith. And um, yes, to Keith. Cheers. There you go. <laughs> And uh, he used to, Keith Floyd, he had one restaurant he used to own. He didn't own many restaurants, but the one he did own was in Phuket in Thailand. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he probably, probably would have used the Pad Thai sauce then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, and uh, he was, um, a, every people used to flock from all over the world to this, to his, the Floyd's brunch at the Brasserie. And uh, we always we wondered why. Then when we actually had the brunch, we realised it was not only like masses of food, but all day on the weekends, on Sundays, it was free flowing wine and sangria. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knew how to and get that, that is why people used to flock from all over the world. Because <laughs> of the free flowing wine. I think one of my favourite um, uh, uh, episodes that I saw with him was when he was um, trying to cook on a boat in choppy water. Did right. you see that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. the food was going yeah. everywhere, but he did not spill a drop of his glass of wine. <laughs> right. It was quite impressive. I'm sure he dropped a load of the, the, the curry or whatever it was, yeah. Right. One thing I will say about these scarlatinas, they do need to be well cooked, like morel mushrooms and other mushrooms that you uh, can get in the shops, you know, things like bluets, uh, are mushrooms that need to be well cooked. These scarlatinas do need to be well cooked. But when you've got a good sizzle on like this, we're talking about maybe five minutes in the wok. And if you come in here closer, Tiller, you'll see that the mushrooms as they're cooking, they're going from blue back to, let's have a look, back to, there's one that's gone back to yellow. That's the actual when they're colour. Picking. Yeah, that's the actual that's colour cool. of the flesh. That is cool. They will do that as um, they sit on the side. So if you cut them right. and leave them on the side for a little while, yeah. they'll start to uh, go back to yellow. But just because we want to make sure they're well cooked and there's not a huge amount of space in the wok, yeah. I think we've probably got enough mushroom in there now. Yeah, okay. And, so. um, and, and they have to be well cooked like for what reason? Yeah, that can come out. That's giving flavour to the. That's giving flavour to the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they're a mushroom that um, if you eat them uh, undercooked, they can make you a little bit sick. Attila, okay. do you know what the um, chemical is in there, or what it is about the scarlatinas that means they need to be well cooked? Uh, because of the oxidation process result. So the blueing process. Uh, is an oxidation and right. the end product uh, i can't recall the name of that chemical compound uh, just top of my head right. so this is gastric irritative so that's why you need heat treatment so you do not want to eat them while they're blue simple as not that. yes right. as simple as that and then cook them a little bit beyond the point when they go yellow and you're totally safe yes back home in hungary we have a 20 minutes rule which means 20 minutes intensive heating cooking or or uh, oven cooking is mandatory by the law for this type of mushrooms, for this type of mushrooms. Oh, so but we should cook this for longer then uh, we have this kind of heat and we, uh, yeah we're slicing them thin yeah we'll be okay okay fine. we are talking about almost uh, 160 70 degree in a wok uh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, this yeah 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 I mean, temperature it, yeah, so if, if what cooking is always about high high cook, high heat anyway so yeah. it kind of kind of works well with this type of mushroom then yes absolutely yeah. And uh, and and hey, so, Bubba. And what was the other mushroom you put? We put in there. We put in some red cracked beliefs. Now they're not exactly renowned as a good culinary mushroom, but okay. I find that if you remove the sponge from them, yeah, they're actually the flesh of the mushroom is uh, is is good mushroom filler. It's not the tastiest okay. mushroom. It's not as tasty as the scarlatina. But if there's nothing else around, I will happily eat red cracked beliefs. And that's right. the, okay. the big cluster that we all found yes, at, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the beginning, just after our little picnic on Rob's bench. So there we I'm go. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I mean, not just the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Another cheers to keep flying there. Look at this. That's a <laughs> cool <laughs> stir fry. <laughs> right, so we're going for the Pad Thai sauce, aren't we? Well, we'll get the noodles in first. I tell you what, it's up to you. I'll let you are the professional here. I was going to attempt to impress you, but you're, um, you're <laughs> taken over anyway. You, you have just taken over, so oh, you we choose. can try. I'll try. I'll see what it's like. Where's it gone? It's over here. Okay. 
it's quite sweet, this pad pie sauce. Is it? Okay. You like it sweet, you I'm more of a savoury kind of guy. Yeah. Well, I'll just stick with the soy sauce then if you prefer. Well, no, it's simple. I think with the mushrooms, it's quite nice to keep it simple, isn't it? Because the mushrooms will have flavour themselves. They do? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll try to how long the extra do you think they need those mushrooms? Let's give those mushrooms another couple of minutes and I think we'll be okay, absolutely then We won't have the noodles yet. Yes, Bonnie, you can put the noodles it'll in. It'll come together quite quickly once uh, once the noodles go in and separate out. know how you were breaking up the giant puff ball yesterday? Break the noodles up the same way and drop them in. Yeah, or you can just put them in and the sauce will break it up for you. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I normally do this. Am I just wasting my you time doing You're wasting your that? time, yeah. <laughs> okay. In that case, we'll break it in half. Yeah. Break it in half. Them in, and then once um, the sauce, as long in. as the heat's high enough, I'll show you. Yeah. This is, we're going to learn something now. We can just plonk that in. Look. And then we need to cover the um, cover it again with the so that there's enough heat. These are the professional tricks, Bonnie. We're learning. <laughs> straight to what noodles? You're supposed to put them in the wok. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're called straight to what noodles. <laughs> these things make sense. You always eat outside, Attila. Not always. <laughs> Most days. Yeah, if we are working, yes. That's the best way, isn't it? That's the best way. So that chickweed salad that we uh, just picked, would you um, put that in or just Yeah, that's like, they're top? kind of like pea shoots, aren't they? Yeah. But it, I would put it on top at the end. Just Once they're ready, they'll wilt down really quickly, won't they? Yeah, really, yeah. really quickly. And they're really succulent as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. That's what I do with pea shoots. Sliced, like finely sliced, like uh, lettuce. Like, and I'll, if I was in the kitchen, then I'd put it, I'd sort of, Get the, the sort of julienne lettuce um, into some ice cold water and then just put the crispy lettuce on top of the noodles at the end. You know? right. um, we can do that with that because uh, I tasted it and they do taste very similar to pea shoots here. Yeah. How do you use pak choy? Pak choy, I don't cook for very long at all. Flash fried or, or poached or boiled, but no more than that sort of two, three minutes. Yeah. Um, you look so at the that, see that, the, the, there you go, look, see how easy that was. Here you go, Once guys, the sauce is like boiling hot, it separates out all the noodles anyway. And then what you want to do is you want to make it, like cook it to a point where the sauce sticks to the noodles and not the bottom of the wok. Yeah. Um, so we've got another minute or so just to break up the last bits and for that sauce to just wrap around. Let's have a little taste before um, we add anything. That's a little on the sweet side for me. Okay. So I put a little bit of light soy sauce into that for some saltiness and then maybe finish it off with a bit of sesame oil. Um, I love like, my sesame oil. Yeah, it's nice to probably put, far too much of it. Yeah, it's nice to put sesame oil at the end of the cooking process because you get that sort of toasted flavour but it's got a really low smoking point so if you put it too early you get almost like a bit petroly smell. Oh, okay. Uh, whereas if you can it, cook it at the end, then it just wraps around the noodles. And you can you can smell it straight away, can't you? There's another thing I've been doing wrong. Oh yeah. Yeah, I um, tend to uh, use a, a little bit of rapeseed oil and um, put a bit of sesame oil in at the beginning before I start cooking. So right. putting the sesame oil in at the end is a better idea. That's better now. So we can tell. Who these guys? The coconut kitchen that if they put about a tablespoon of light soy sauce and a pit and a, and a half a teaspoon of sesame oil in there, they've suddenly got a different dish. <laughs> that's but that's good. That's good now. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we got enough for everyone? I think so. Yeah. All of those mushrooms. Thanks for having me, Marla. Nicely coloured. Yes, you are uh, more than welcome to come and cook for us anytime you want to, Jeremy. <laughs> Although, next time, I don't think I'm going to attempt Chinese. I'm going to attempt something uh, that you don't just bulldoze in and take over. <laughs> you knew that was going to happen. You're going to throw those on top now. I was almost hoping, to be honest. I've got to be honest. Okay.
So there's our lovely chickweed. You guys, if you want to know how to ID chickweed, watch my full length video on how to identify chickweed. It is a truly fabulous green, which is available almost all year in almost all fields that you ever walk around in. Really flavoursome, really succulent, and truly abundant. That's brilliant, that's done. There we go. Lovely. Turn that off. And we're done. And shake my hand, <laughs> Chef. <laughs> Cheers, Very mate. good job. Right, okay. Are we all hungry? Yeah. No, they're just <laughs> chatting. <laughs> Let's try that again. Are we all hungry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great work, guys. Mm. Nice. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Attila. There you are. Scarlatina Belique Pad Thai. Looks amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Marlo would have done a great job, but I didn't let him. <laughs> <laughs>